Good evening and welcome to another edition of Money Talk with Melanie. I am your business Eva, Melanie Collette, coming to you live via SHR Media and High Plains Planet Talk Radio. I hope everyone is doing well. And actually, I just said High Plains Planet Talk Radio and that was a mistake. That was just a habit. I'm just coming to you via SHR Media. I'm no longer on High Plains Planet Talk Radio. Radio. Uh, I want to say hi to people who are piling into the Facey chat. Uh, Dana and Terry, hello. I hope you're all as well. Um, I'm coming to you live via beautiful Cape May uh, County, New Jersey, which I think it's beautiful. Maybe it's beautiful. I, I haven't really been outside today, I'm going to be honest. Hi, <laughs> hi Katina Pe- Person. I hope you are doing well today. Uh, and I hope everybody had a wonderful week. My guest today uh, for hour one, my guest is the one and only Miss Tamisha D. Smith. She's the owner and CEO of the Dunbar Center Incorporated. She's going to talk to us about successful entrepreneurship and giving back to in our community. I'm really excited uh, to have her on today. She's actually a personal friend of mine. And if, and you'll notice she's in the Facey chat too. Now, those of you who, um, who, uh, come on, Melanie, those of you who uh, are on my social media, on my Facebook page, may be familiar with Miss Tamisha as one of the d- dissenting, uh, voices, politically, politically speaking, uh, <laughs> on my Facebook page, but she's also a very good friend of mine and a complete, uh, and total rock star, I have to tell you. So I can't wait uh, till the audience gets to speak with her today uh, and gets to hear from her today and hear her story, her background, and uh, how she's she is has has built and is continuing to build her empire. Um, and then in hour two, we have uh, Mr. John Rayner, who is the founder of uh, John Rayner TV. He's also a global entrepreneur, and he's going to talk to us about how to boost your business today. Uh, Daniel, ha- hi. Ron Edwards, hello. Welcome to the Facey Chat. Brand new Ron Edwards notebook today, by the way. Always looking forward to that. Uh Daniel Johnson, hello. So, very exciting Money Talk with Melanie. Now, listen, I apologize for running running late today, and I, I just want to be clear that it was not Miss Tamisha's fault that uh, that we were late. It was my my fault. I was I was running late uh, today, and uh, she wanted me to make sure that I, made, I let everybody know that it wasn't her. <laughs> it was it was me, and it was. But uh, very very exciting uh, show today. I, I'm excited. Ah, uh, yes. I'm excited to have her as a guest. She is she is something else. When you guys hear her, her background and how she's built her business, I just, she's, you know, she's who I want to be when I grow up someday. Just really, I really, she's inspiring, seriously. So, as crazy as she is, even though she's a, she's a Democrat, but we, we'll work on her, ladies and gents. <laughs> I, had to, I had to throw that in there. I had to. Um. But anywho, uh, the Money Talk Minute, the Money Talk News, I only have like a minute to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, Treasury Secretary Steve uh, Mnuchin is pulling out of Saudi Arabia's future investment initiative meeting. If you guys have been watching the news, you know that um, there's there was a, uh, a, a national journalist from Washington Post that it, it seems that the evidence points to them having been killed. Uh, at a consulate, consulate in Istanbul, and when I say killed, I don't mean like nicely, like euthanized or anything like that. I mean uh, just uh, heinously uh, murdered. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, Doug, my unpaid publicist to the Facey Chat. I think I saw Mike in there, um, but uh, and so we're pulling out of this uh, this uh, this meeting that's coming up. We're already up against the break, you guys. It's going to be a really great show, not because I'm so awesome, but my guests are fantastic. Uh, and Eric Jessup is in the chat. And my first guest for hour one is Miss Tamisha Smith. We'll be back on the other side of the break when I can introduce her a brand new Ron Edwards notebook coming your way right now. The Republican Party is often described as oppressive, racist, dogmatic, and bigoted, but yet the actual history of the GOP says otherwise. Hello, I'm 
Alright, Edward, on the next page from the Edward's Notebook, it was the Republican Party founded in 1854 in Jackson, Michigan, that abolished slavery. It was Republican Abraham Lincoln who signed the Emancipation Proclamation by executive order to free slaves. The Republican nominated Congress passed the 13th Amendment ending slavery. It was Republicans who made sure the former slaves received equal protection by passing the 14th Amendment. Unfortunately, Democrats later pondered black Americans, particularly men, who lynched the Ku Klux Klan and Jim Crow bigotry. The 15th Amendment passed by Republicans granted black men the right to vote. Democrats in the South didn't like that and often killed black men who tried to vote. In 1957, Republicans passed civil rights legislation and later blocked Democrats from segregating schools. If it were not for Republicans, the Civil Rights Act of 1960 would have remained an idea. And it was the Gipper, Ronald Reagan, who made Martin Luther King Day a national holiday. Learn the truth, and it will set you free. Feel free to join me Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on AmericanMatters.us and SHRmedia.com and Sunday midnight on the Talk America Radio Network. I'm Ron Edwards. Ron Edwards, the new voice of America. Right now, you can get the credit you deserve. Just visit MrCreditRepair.biz. Let their expert credit repair specialists remove late payments, charge-offs, collections, even old bankruptcies fast and easy. That's MrCreditRepair.biz. Why go anyplace else? Increase your credit score today. At Mr. Credit, you always get a quality service all at our everyday discounted price. Stop getting turned down for cars, credit cards, or even new homes. Visit MrCreditRepair.biz today. That's MRCreditRepair.biz. Your credit repair is our number one priority. Who likes paying taxes? Nobody. That's why Eva Rosenberg from TaxMama.com wants you to pay less of them. Read Small Business Taxes Made Easy and learn how legally hiring your spouse and children can slash your taxes. Learn how to set up a business plan that minimizes taxes, the benefits of setting up an exit plan, how to avoid getting audited, and how to legally increase your deductible expenses with better record-keeping techniques. Don't let the IRS squeeze you out of every penny. Visit TaxMama.com. Click on Ask a Tax Question to get free answers to your tax and business questions. That's TaxMama.com. And welcome back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. And my very first guest that I have coming up is not only a, a rock star entrepreneur, and she, and uh, just just she's just awesome. I just that's the only way I can explain it. She's a, a very good friend of mine. Her name is Miss Tamisha. D. Smith. She is the owner and chief executive officer of the Dunbar Center Incorporated. She's going to talk to us today about the topic of uh, successful entrepreneurship and giving back in your community. And she's an expert in this area because she has really successfully <laughs> I'm looking at her comments in the facey chat and cracking up. She's successfully done both now. Uh, I'm going to warn the audience a little bit that, you know, she and I are, 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 are our besties and uh, uh, you know, we, we have promised each other that we're going to be super duper professional during this interview. Isn't that right, Miss Tamisha Smith? No, you promised that. I didn't promise that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to, I would love for you to share with the audience a bit about your background before we talk about what the Dunbar Center is. Share with the audience okay. about like where where you're from, what you did before you became CEO of the Dunbar Center. It, it's a it's a really good story, and you need this background. And Donna McCleary's here in the chat. I want Donna McCleary to to hear this. And Donna needs to know. Donna's one of your fellow one of your fellow liberals. So you know. Oh, so you gotta throw that in. Okay. Yeah, she's she yeah she's she's team she's team uh, Obama like you. <laughs> but tell, but tell the see. I, I I have liberal friends, and I and I love my liberal friend. You you and Donna. Yes. So tell yes. tell the yes. <laughs> tell the audience about uh, about your background. Well, I, I appreciate you and all your equal opportunity friendship. Thank you so much. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> so 
No, I really, Mel, uh, Melanie, I really appreciate you allowing me to be on your show this evening. It's been a long time coming, and I'm, like, so excited. I wish I could be sitting right there with you having some wine, but I'm having some here <laughs> without you, but and I'm enjoying it, so. <laughs> so where did you, now, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I grew up in New York City, um, in Queens, and uh, my parents, well, my mom's from Georgia, my dad's from Harlem. And uh, my dad worked for Exxon, and I had young parents, so, you know, my, my mom was 17 when she had me, and then uh, she was 22 when she had my brother. So I had very young parents and, um, you know, grew up in several parts of Queens, out in uh, Edgemere Projects, in my grandmother's basement apartment in Springfield Garden, you know, to a nice co-op in Jamaica, Queens. But, um... Hey, listen, it was great. I wouldn't trade it in for anything. And uh, got to New Jersey via my dad's job at Exxon. You know, they told him he could keep his job. However, um, they couldn't keep it in the Manhattan office right across the street from Radio City Music Hall. So it was either go to Houston, Texas, or New Jersey. So we moved to the country, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the country. So... Yeah, so, and it's been great, and um, and I went to high school here, and immediately following high school, I moved right back to Queens to a basement apartment, even after being accepted to five colleges, and uh, I, I just wasn't ready to go. You know, I was a great student in high school. My parents were kind of leaning with me and was like, listen, you know, go find yourself, figure it out what you want to do, and I moved back to Queens to a basement apartment, and um, I worked for then what was Chemical Bank. And uh, I spent all my money traveling around like I ate ramen noodles and uh, I spent all my money traveling to Florida, California, everything I could spend my money on. And then finally, the year after, I called up uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University out in Rutherford and asked them uh, if my acceptance was still good. And they said I needed to take a placement test, did that, got a new acceptance letter. And, you know, so that was I came back to Jersey to go to college. So you finally decided maybe maybe uh, li- living on ramen noodles was not the way was not the way to go. <laughs> you know what? Just after you know, so you go to school for twelve consecutive years, and you just you just needed a break, and you know you just needed a break. I just needed a break, and so I did that, and I you know, and I enjoyed it, and then I had then it was time to get back to work. <laughs> for sure. So yeah, because I yeah, I can't live on ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and you certainly aren't living on it on it now. So, how, no. so how did you go from college to being in the insurance industry? Because you were in the insurance industry for quite some time. Twenty twenty five years, twenty five years, and, and and not for nothing, I'm still in the in, in insurance industry because you know me, I like a good hustle. Right. So that means I like to I like to collect all my checks. You know anything about an entrepreneur? They will tell you have multi revenue streams, and I'm all about multi revenue streams. So I'm still in the insurance industry, as well as being a social entrepreneur. So it was very funny. I um I worked for a company, um what was then uh, MetPath Labs, out in uh, Peterborough, which is now Quest Diagnostics. And our insurance was through U.S. Healthcare. Those employees, the people that came in to do the um, enrollment meetings, that open enrollment, they were like in their mid twenties. They were very happy, you know, very excited to do their job. And I was like, you know, I want to work there. <laughs> I want to. I want to. I want to do what they do. So I went to apply, and. Um, Got the job, and I was there for 10 years through various facets of their organization from customer service to claims processing to, you know, working on very large national accounts as a sales associate. You know, I have my insurance license still in 14 states, and, you know, pre-children, I was able to fly around all over the country. You know, it was amazing. It was amazing. So I enjoyed every moment of my tenure. Um, when U.S. Healthcare then was acquired by Aetna, I merged with Aetna, and it was amazing, and I wouldn't trade it at all. Wow, that's amazing. Now, didn't you work in- independently in the insurance industry for a little while? Yes. So after my tenure with Aetna, 
Um, I was, while doing my tenure with Aetna, I was approached by a brokerage firm um, to come and work with them to be one of their account managers. They wanted, well, they needed diversity. Um, one of their largest prospective clients was Philadelphia Coca-Cola Bottling Company at the time, which happened to be owned by Bruce Llewellyn. Um, it was the largest African-American-owned um, Coca-Cola bottler in the country. And for those who don't know, Bruce Llewellyn is actually the very um, first cousin to Colin Powell. They almost look like twin cousins. Oh, wow. Um, exactly. So uh, they needed diversity. They needed someone that looked like me with my knowledge and skill set to be able to represent their firm at a company like Philly Coke. And I was, um, after having been approached by them for over a year, um, the, the benefit structure, pension plan, and so forth changed at Aetna. And it was no longer, a, I, never, I didn't find it a real benefit to stay because at that point now it just turned into a check. It didn't turn, it wasn't the outlook that I had for myself with, you know, retiring with full benefits and so forth, it now turned into a check. And so when that, when that passion is gone, you know, I can easily replace it. So the opportunity that they were providing, you know, was something that I was interested in. And so I took that opportunity and I decided to move on. And when I went to that larger brokerage firm, they taught me a lot. Um, however, I did, um, with uh, a Hispanic partner um, who already had a firm, I went and joined his firm after a successful negotiation uh, with equity in that company to work and build one of the largest minority-owned insurance brokerage firms here in the state of New Jersey. So, yeah, um, I just yeah, so that that was great. That was tremendous because it was an opportunity for a minority firm to stand on its own two feet. And, and be a prime um, vendor and, and not always the subcontractor to opportunities and that we could then subcontract with other smaller firms and bring them into the opportunity and share the pie with them. So I really enjoyed my time there. For eight years, I was with that firm, and it was great. And it's a fantastic firm. I, I met the people uh, that, uh, actually, I believe that's how we, that's how we met. That's when it enters, uh, the relationship between Tamisha and, and myself. I think we met at a, uh, 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 New Jersey African American Chamber event or something a few years ago, like five right. years ago or so. Right. Uh, right. And right. for those of you, for the benefit of the audience, if some of the information, um, Seems to be a bit uh, ambiguous. The reason for that is, I figure I should, should explain this part. In the, insur in the insurance industry, there are c compliance um, regulations and things where uh, you know me, me and both both me and Tamisha's licenses could get pulled if we if we reveal certain information. <laughs> so, right. like there's things that we're allowed to say and things that we're not allowed to say regarding the industry. And so if some of the, if some times, uh, e either of us, when we're talking about the insurance industry, seem like we're being vague, it, that is intentional because we're not allowed to, um, you're not allowed to say certain, certain things, uh, all right. from a promotional yeah, we don't perspective. We need the Department of Banking and Insurance all over us. No, <laughs> no, no, ne neither of us. Because they, they are gangsters. Yeah, and yeah. Neither of us wants a phone call from banking and insurance, and we like our licenses, and and and, and we like we like the money that that comes with having exactly. those licenses. <laughs> so, because I was just listening, and I was like, oh yeah, she's not she's not saying you know X Y Z because of compliance compliance issues. It, uh, the bureaucracy is is alive and well. Um, so when we talk talk about this particular topic. We do have to kind of avoid saying certain things. But, because um, otherwise we get in trouble. So, you spent 25 years in the insurance industry. Toward the, end, the tail end of that, I start hearing you talk about this project that you're working on. 
the Dunbar sure. Center. I see you post about it occasionally. We have dinner occasionally. You're talking about it, and I don't know exactly, you know, what it is, but I, I hear through the grapevine that you, you kind of left the full-time, you know, insurance hustle behind, and you're, you're working on this baby project, and I'm like, wow, you know, that's, that's fantastic, even though I don't know exactly what it is. Tell the audience... This is this is the fantastic part. Tell the audience a little bit about the transition from, you know, really working on, focusing on the insurance industry proper, and then shifting your attention to this this baby project of yours, to your baby, the Dunbar Center. What is it? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I have to say that right that transition was amazing and it felt great. And at the end of um, 2015, December 2015, I decided to basically retire at 45 years old from the insurance industry. And um, I wouldn't change a thing for the world. So, um, like I said, I still have my licenses. You know, I still like, you know, I like to keep all my hustles in place. I like to multi-revenue stream like most entrepreneurs do. You know, like my checks coming in from all areas, but... um. At 45, you know, I took a step back from that because I really wanted to, and I am, dedicating my full attention to the Dunbar Center, which is going to be a 78,000 square feet, $33 million construction project going up in the south ward of Newark. That's basically, it started out as a 24-7, 365 dialysis facility, but now has turned into or has morphed into an actual full facility medical complex now with, you know, not only the dialysis facility, but with primary urgent care services, lab, um, a host of specialists that deal with um, renal dialysis and all of the related diagnoses like high blood pressure, diabetes, um, you know, pediatric dental services. Um, a wellness line, which is so important, you know, as it relates to, you know, your whole whole body, holistic, and taking care of yourself. So I'm very excited about it. It was a project that really started because my brother, who is now 44, has been on dialysis for nine years at age 35. Wow. Um, he went on dialysis, and, you know, that was out of... Um, high blood pressure. So just to let you know, I am a governor appointee, Governor uh, Chris Christie. So, uh, you know, I'm with y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Governor Christie. Yeah, Republican Chris governor. appointed me to the New Jersey Department of Health, um, to the Office of Minority and Multicultural Health. And, um, and, and that was an eye-opener because that division – you know, works throughout the state of New Jersey dealing with issues like um, kidney dialysis where 70% of new cases come from high blood pressure and diabetes in our urban communities. And our black men are the fastest growing population um, with kidney failure and with chronic kidney disease. And so what my brother experiencing that it was really my intent to just learn what I could to be able to listen to him intelligently and to be able to comfort him where I could, um, but just really to learn about what this issue was and, you know, why he was afflicted with it. And the more I started to study about it, the more I started to learn about it, the more I realized that this was a chronic epidemic in our urban communities and especially the ones without access to health care and without access to health services. So it was really important for me to not allow my brother to become a victim to chronic kidney disease and to become more of an advocate. And in becoming an advocate and having Governor Christie realize that my passion for trying to bring services to our community to make sure that we don't increase the population um, in renal dialysis centers, but to be able to kind of treat those conditions um, 
in the early stages to prevent a person from having to go on dialysis, it, you know, that, that was heartwarming to have the governor recognize that and appoint me to the Department of Health. But having uh, Mayor Roz Baraka in the, um, Newark, New Jersey, to consider this a priority project um, in the South Ward of Newark is, is, is also a testimony to the effort that I've been putting into this. And I'm very excited that the city has designated um, the property that they have for us to build this 78,000 square foot facility, which sits on a main street, Bergen Street, New Jersey, big Bergen Street in Newark, New Jersey, sort of equal distance between, um, if anyone knows Newark, New Jersey, between um, St. Michael's and University Hospital at Wanden in the Central Ward and between Beth Israel Medical Center in the South Ward. So it sits still on Bergen Street in equal distance between those three hospitals. So I'm uh, really excited about it. You know what we have? We're, we're up against the break, and I want you on the other side of the break. I want you to tell the audience a little more about that area and why you chose it, like the the demographics of that area, and why you thought it was important to put uh, the Dunbar uh, the Dunbar Center in that area. And talk a little bit. Just talk a little bit more, more, a little bit more, a little bit more <laughs> about that area. You need a glass of wine, girl. I'm just. <laughs> Um, only, okay. only, only coffee during the show. Hopefully, you're looking at the comments in the facey chat. Uh, Chris Level says it's, it sounds like an awesome project. It is an awesome project. You're listening. Well, to I'm looking at the comments. David Lynn said you don't look happy, so I suggest you start smiling. Oh. My Thanks a lot, David Lynn. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. My guest for hour one is Miss Tamisha Smith. She is the owner and CEO of the Dunbar Center Incorporated. And uh, she's talking to us about successful entrepreneurship and giving back in your community. We'll be back in a few moments. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, it's Sean from the Sackheads Radio Show. Also one of the owners here at the SHR Media Network. Are you opinionated? Have you ever wanted to do your own show? Have you ever heard somebody like the Sackheads and go, yeah, I could probably do that better? Well, now's your chance. Send me a five-minute clip at sackheadsradio at gmail.com. And maybe you can be part of the SHR broadcast. Sackheads Radio at gmail.com. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were amused in making this ad. When dirty politicians, shadow governments, and deceptive Islam blind the world with fake stream media smoke, their only fear is one man with a cane. I'm Dave Miller. Join me through SHRmedia.com, HighPlainsTalkRadio.com, and the Western Free Radio Network at Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes for a different perspective weekly on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. And catch me on Jeff Mitchell's EDL Radio on BlogTalkRadio.com. There's no doubt ever. Because truth is not always pleasant. Hey guys, it's Zach Edpel, and I'm excited to tell you about a brand new show here on the SHR Media Network. I'm teaming up with the one and only, all-powerful, the bloviating Zeppelin sitting here to my left, bringing to you a, a fresh new show uh, here on the network. It's Against Tyranny. And uh, we'll be picking up where the sackheads left off. Excited to be with you, sir. Sackheads against, sackheads against tyranny. We're going to chat. We're going to chat Wednesday night. Sackheads against tyranny. Wednesday night, 11 p.m. Oh, it's the same time, right? 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. Same sack time, same sack channel. SHRmedia.com. See what I did there?
It's, it's your business name here, here, Melanie Collette. Collette. I am inviting, inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media at High Place Planet Talk Radio. You can't afford Human by race, Christian by faith, American by nationality, and conservative by choice. Reverend Ralph J. Chenum Sr. is the right guy on SHR Media from 8.05 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. And if on the grand occasion I am ever wrong, I will still always be right. The right guy on SHR Media. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday, from 7 to 9 a.m., right here on SHR Media. Why are you joining us? For fun things like sports, politics, oh, maybe some news and entertainment, and all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m., here on SHRmedia.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. And my guest for hour one that we're speaking with right now is the one, the only, the very special and one of my BFFs, Miss Tamisha D. Smith, owner and CEO of the Dunbar Center Incorporated. And she also is really uh, just a master entrepreneur and a, a brilliant businesswoman and rock star. She's very... Very humble about all that she has accomplished. And if you, if you hang out with her, and she's one of my girls, right? If you hang out with her, like one of the most down to earth people <laughs> you will ever meet. If you haven't picked that up already, if you, if you're just joining us, you will pick it up in a minute. But just one of the coolest chicks. I know, just saying. And also, <laughs> but also this rock star CEO. So before the break, we were talking about the Dunbar Center. We were talk- you were talking about um, where the center is located. And you talked about it being located in Newark, New Jersey. And I just wanted you to give the audience an idea of, um, like, kind of the demographics of Newark, New Jersey, and why you picked Newark as a location. Sure, sure. Thanks so much. And again, thank you so much for having me on your show. I, I'm so excited to be here. So, yes. As a, as a friend, I enjoy you, but I'm so glad to be on your show. It's been a long time coming, so thank you so much. Aww. Um, so, so Newark, New Jersey, so, um, you know, a lot, the better half of my uh, life was spent in Essex County, um, uh, and um, I did a lot of work with the city of Newark, being one of my clients, working with the former mayor, Cory Booker, who's tremendous. And um, and now the new mayor, Roz Baraka, and it's, it's just been a tremendous opportunity. But taking a look at um, the area and, again, the need for such services, you know, Essex County alone um, had over a 1,000 patients, excuse me, Newark alone has over a 1,000 patients leaving the city looking to access care. And Essex County happens to be... Um, the county with the highest population of kidney dialysis patients. And so that alone was like, this is the area that has the most critical need. Again, again, I spent the better part of the last, you know, half of my life come living in Essex County. And so it felt comfortable for me and my relationship with the city of Newark, um, you know, on a professional level, you know, was tremendous in having, you know, the mayor's support and this project, the Dunbar Center, is actually named thanks to my project manager, Tanisha Nash-Laird, from Legacy Business Advisors, shout out, um, that she had it named in the redevelopment plan. So by name, the Dunbar Center is named in the redevelopment plan for the South Ward of Newark. It's considered um, one of Mayor Ross Baraka's <clears throat> uh, part of his MNI, Model Neighborhood Initiative, so I'm really excited 
about the city, you know, working in this public-private partnership and allowing, again, over a 70,000 square foot complex to be erected in the South Ward of Newark. So it's very exciting. It is extremely exciting. And I posted in the uh, Facebook chat. I don't know if you saw it or if everybody else uh, saw it. And I, I, um, a, a link to an article where uh, Miss Tamisha and the Dunbar Center were featured. If you need to need me to post it again, just let me know in a facey chat and I'll post the link to it uh, again. Uh, but it's a really a pretty comprehensive article that just just describes, uh, tells you a little bit more about Tamisha and tells you about the uh, the Dunbar Center and about about the progress of the project. But I, I you know I remember when it first started out and, and what the plan was and how amb- ambitious you know, the project was, and to see it actually come to fruition, I, I was just like, wow, just, just an amazing thing. So I, I want to shift a little bit and talk about the, uh, your entrepreneurial side and your success as, a, as an entrepreneur and as a female entrepreneur, as a, fe- as a black female entrepreneur, uh, and, and your experiences as far as that's concerned and your, your challenges that you may have had as far as that's concerned. And you can attack that from any um, perspective <laughs> that you'd like to. And I, I realize that that's super dangerous, but I'm going to, <laughs> oh, but, but, you know, before I, before I move on to that, that I want to, I do want to address a question that was in the facey chat. Um, somebody asked whether or not uh, there are any uh, holistic services in at the Dunbar center. Yeah, and absolutely, that's a great question, and I did see that one as well. And yes, yeah, so I mentioned that one of the um, then uh, one of the specialists that will be there is a wellness salon, and I feel that it's so important that we treat holistically the whole body and not just with prescription medication. So, you know, a person who's on dialysis, um, you know, it's it's. Their condition is what it is. However, filling the chairs of the dialysis facility is not the, um, the achievement. The achievement is our community outreach because the person that's in that family also has family members that are eating the same things, living the same way. And when we can reach out to them and change their mindset and change the way that they live and change the way that they perceive you know, their dietary needs, exercise needs, um, and then we can prevent them from becoming another patient, that's the real gratification in what we're doing. That's the real measure of success. Because like I said, there are more than a 1,000 patients leaving the city to access care. This facility alone can only treat 300 patient, patients at full capacity. That's it. 300 patients at full capacity is all we can treat. And so preventing another person, another minority, because that's the nature of the community, from being another dialysis patient, that's that's the real goal. That's the real success. And so the wellness salon that we're going to have included to be able to treat the whole body from massage therapy to Tai Chi to guided imagery to help holistically treat individuals in a community is is the true measure of success so that was a great question from that person oh that is that that's fantastic and it's such a good idea because a lot of times that gets you know ignored especially in the secular uh medical community so uh, i mean I, i think that's fantastic that you made a point of making sure that that was included in the services that that the the center provides so that's fan- that's fantastic. I actually have a good friend who uh, one one of my besties, her uh, boyfriend. Um, her, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm, I'm laughing at the comments. Ron Edwards. <laughs> He's such a such a uh, uh, Ron Edwards. He challenges me anyway. Um, <laughs> but one of my best friends, her boyfriend, is actually on the, on a transplant list. And uh, he has lupus, and his, uh, you know, lupus can affect your different organs, including uh, your kidneys. And he, he's, uh, uh, you know, actually on standby right now. Yeah. Uh, 
for a kidney. So, I, you know, I know exactly what it is that you're saying. I want to shift a little bit to, uh, I wanted to make sure I a- ask, answered that question, but um, I want to shift a little bit to, to your entrepreneurial side because you worked in private industry and you made a transition uh, to being an entrepreneur and then you, you know, semi-retired, I guess you could say, and then switched to working right. on this project. But I want to know about your tips for success, your challenges, and, and listen, not for not for nothing, there are challenges with me. While I, uh, I don't think that things are, you know, it's not 1960, you know, we don't have the same challenges as African American women as we did back then, but we certainly do still have challenges, um, you know, being successful, this, there, there are not, there aren't zero challenges, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There are still challenges, especially when you're ro- running with the big dogs like you are. So I'd love for you to talk about how you made that transition, any challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. All right. Well, you know what? I have to say that you have to be in the game and, you know, and, and I, that means that from so many different um, aspects, so, like you, I've run for political office. Um, I also am an elected official currently, and as I had indicated previously, I'm also um, a governor appointee um, to the New Jersey Department of Health by Governor Christie. And I know you referenced me as a Democrat as my party, but I, you know, I really feel like I'm a Republicrat. Yes, she's a she's a Republicrat. <laughs> you know. Right, you know why, and it's and it's my thing is you have to be in the game. You have to re- respect both sides of the aisle. You have to respect the people making decisions, and you have to be able to be up for the challenge, open and expand your mind, and open your creativity, your innovation, and be able to watch the moves that people are making, be able to participate in what they're doing. So it it hasn't been an easy road. I mean, the Dunbar Center is six years in the making. This is no overnight sensation, and um, and it and it took it's a long arduous. It took a, it was a very long arduous task to get where we are. But when this facility is open, it's bringing more than 175 jobs to North New Jersey. And I know it's not Amazon, but you know what? It's 175 jobs that the city didn't have before. It's also bringing services to be able to treat more than 300 patients in the community at any one given time. So, you know, and this, the Newark location is my flagship location because we already have an expansion plan that covers seven other cities around the country. Again, because of the tremendous work of my project manager, and again, I'm going to give her a shout out to Nisha Nashlayer with Legacy Business Advisors. She, um, was able to put the Dunbar Center on the map where other economic development professionals are looking to have a facility of this nature to bring jobs and services to their community, um, and they're willing to provide, again, a public-private partnership with providing land and access to capital. And so, you know, I didn't do any of this by myself. Having the insurance background, yes. But developing strong business relationships with, you had mentioned it before, the African-American Chamber of Commerce, you know, um, the president there, John Harmon, is tremendous. He helped to open doors, you know, with access to capital. He's another one I need to get on the show. Another one uh, that slides slides on both sides of the aisle. (laughs) Yes, yes. So it's, you know, creating, creating... You have to have friends on both sides of the aisle if you're trying to get anything done. Sure. You can't have a closed mind. You have to have an open mind. Let me tell you something. Red and blue, whatever, but money's green. So if I can't have an open mind, that's going to be, that, that's going to only, you know, create a shortfall for me. So you have to have an open mind and be able to work with both sides of the aisle if you're going to try to accomplish any real goal. And I'm really excited about the fact that we'll be bringing 175 jobs to Newark, New Jersey. And being able to treat people from the community and provide them access to affordable health care, you know, access to a facility 
um, to provide them affordable health care and access to affordable services. So uh, it's really exciting. But again, it's no overnight sensation. There's been um, a lot of challenges and um, I don't want to say failures, but you know, it's like, uh, you know, you try it a hundred times and I won't say I, I failed 99, but you know, 99 problems, but time 100, that was the success. So I know 99 ways not to do something. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and that's what's exciting about it. And so, and, and having this opportunity, you know, I think that there's some people who have that spirit within them as a, as an entrepreneur to, and have that courage to be able to take that step outside of the traditional box. And, you know, it's not for everybody. It takes a lot of courage. It's not for everybody. And so, um, and you have to be prepared for all the no's or the door slammed in your face and to be able to help pick yourself up along with, again, that business community that you surround yourself with, to be able to pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and go knock on the next door. And so it's, um, but it's been a tremendous ride. And again, I wouldn't change in my entrepreneurial spirit anything i love it i absolutely love it so if someone else, if someone else would like to get in touch with you if they would like to follow you on social media if they want to talk to you get more information about the dunbar center how would they go about doing that great so um tamisha smith on facebook and i think you tagged me in this post so mm-hmm. um Please, uh, you know, friend me on Facebook. Tamisha Smith is also my handle on Twitter. Um, the Dunbar Center, it's D-U-N-B-A-R-Center.com. Uh, we have a website. We also have a Facebook page as well. So, you know, please follow us there. We put out articles every day related to, um, you know, health and wellness, especially related to chronic kidney disease. But, um, you know, and I'm, I, I sit on the host of a lot of boards, you know, African American Chamber of Commerce, um, the United Negro College Fund. And so that's where, in addition to being an entrepreneur and having that, you know, social entrepreneur spirit, but I'm also a philanthropist. So being able to each one teach one and help raise the next one up is very important to me. So sitting on the Leadership Council for UNCF, being able to raise money for scholarships for our youth to go to college is very important. I'm also on the board of Project Redirect, you know, which helps to improve the social and academic skills of our youth. So these are things that are important to me. So besides making the money, where do I spend the money? Where do I reinvest the money? Yeah, and she's on, <laughs> Tamisha only mentioned about three of the boards that she's on, but I'm looking at a list of about 20. <laughs> boards that she's on she didn't mention the u.s women's chamber of commerce the international alliance for women i think you did mention the united negro college fund uh the new jersey leadership council the women's caucus of new jersey the national association for R- professional women uh the national organization for women i'll try to forgive you for that one the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and okay. ca- county committee woman in in Knowlton Township, where uh, in in Warren County. Yes, also an elected. Of- I didn't I didn't even know you were an elected official. I didn't realize that. I'm a school. I've been on the school board for nine years. I'm school board president. I'm the vice president of the Warren County School Board Association. And I'm on the Legislative and Finance Committee for New Jersey School Board Association for the state. So not only am I in business, but I'm also in education. Okay? Yep, I see you. I see you, girl. I see you. Listen, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. I want to also thank you for me not having to use the bleep button. That was very nice. I'm telling you, it was, woo, I, I, I almost was there. <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate that very much. That that's that was nice. You know, because you and I can get a little wild. Um, my my next guest is calling in, but I'm about to tell I'm about to uh, tell him to to chill out. Excuse me, uh, to relax for a second. <laughs> but um. 
But I'm very happy to have had you on the show. You did a fantastic job, as I expected. And I appreciate you not, not uh, you know, not, not having to use the bleep button. And now, now I don't have to mark my show explicit, which is, which is very nice. I appreciate that very next much. Next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Melanie, I truly appreciate you allowing me this platform and to come on to your show and talk about social entrepreneurship. And trust me, if, if you if you have an idea or a goal that you want to follow, follow your passion. When you do what you're passionate about, you will never work another day in your life. I love it. And, and, the, and the girl lives by it. The girl lives by it. And one of the most down-to-earth, chicks you ever want to meet if you if you follow her on social media you will have a blast if you see her on uh my page you will have a blast she's she like i said she's one along with donna mccleary which is another one of my good friends uh you will see her as one of the dissenting political voices on my page but she's she's respectful uh a respectful dissenting voice which i always welcome we, we can't you know it's my belief we can't live in a in, in an echo chamber you know, we have to listen to other people's sides and other people's viewpoint. And uh, I appreciate your friendship, sis. And uh, you inspire me, girl. And I hope that this interview will inspire others to do exactly what you're doing. I really do. Thank you again for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Have a great night. Thank you. Yep. You're listening to Money Bye-bye. Talk with Melanie. That was the first hour. I hope you guys all enjoyed my interview with Miss Tamisha Smith owner and executive uh chief executive officer of the dunbar center and uh up next for the we're going to go into a commercial break but up next i will have mr john rayner founder and ceo of john rayner tv he's a global entrepreneur and he's going to talk to us about how to boost your business today we'll be back in a few moments Fast and easy. That's Mr. Credit Repair. Biz. Why go anyplace else? Increase your credit score today. At Mr. Credit, you always get a quality service all at our everyday discount price. Stop getting turned down for cars, credit cards, or even new homes. Visit Mr. Credit Repair. Biz today. That's M R Credit Repair. Biz. Your credit repair is our number one priority. Who Who likes paying paying taxes? taxes? Nobody. Nobody. That's That's why why Eva Rosenberg from TaxMama.com wants you to pay less of them. Read Small Business Taxes Made Easy and learn how legally hiring your spouse and children can slash your taxes. Learn how to set up a business plan that minimizes taxes, the benefits of setting up an exit plan, how to avoid getting audited, and how to legally increase your deductible expenses with better record-keeping techniques. Don't let the IRS squeeze you out of every penny. Visit TaxMama.com. Click on Ask a Tax Question to get free answers to your tax and business questions. That's TaxMama.com Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, it's Sean from the Sackheads Radio Show. Also one of the owners here at the SHR Media Network. Are you opinionated? Have you ever wanted to do your own show? Have you ever heard somebody like the Sackheads and go, yeah, I could probably do that better. Well, now's your chance. Send me a five-minute clip at sackheadsradio at gmail.com and maybe you can be part of the SHR broadcast. Sackheadsradio at gmail.com Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish or abuse in the making of this ad. When dirty politicians, shadow governments, and deceptive Islam blind the world with fake stream media smoke, their only fear is one man with a cane. 
I'm Dave Milk. Join me through shrmedia.com, highplanetalkradio.com, and the Western Free Radio Network at Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes for a different perspective weekly on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. And catch me on Jeff Mitchell's EDL Radio on blogtalkradio.com. There's Nurturing.Canada. Because truth is not always pleasant. Hey guys, it's Zach Edflin. I'm excited to tell you about a brand new show here on the SHR Media Network. I'm teaming up with the one and only all-powerful, the bloviating Zeppelin right, sitting here right. to my left, bringing to you a, a fresh new show uh, here on the network. It's uh, Against Tyranny, and uh, we'll be picking up where the Sackheads left off. Excited to be with you, sir. Sackheads against, sack against Tyranny. We're going to shout. We're going to shout Wednesday night. Sackheads against Tyranny. Wednesday night, 11 p.m. Oh, it's the same time, right? 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Same sack time, same sack channel. SHRmedia.com. See what I did there? And welcome back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette, and this is the second hour of Money Talk with Melanie. And my guest today, my guest for the second hour is Mr. John Rayner. He is the owner, founder of uh, John Rayner TV, and he's a global entrepreneur. Not only is he an entrepreneur, he's a speaker, advisor, and author. I'm very excited to have him on the show today for the second hour. And and uh, how are you? I just I cause I'm going to go, just go ahead and introduce you. How are you this evening? Good, Melanie. How are you? I'm awesome. I, I I love I love people with awesome accents. I just have to say that. I I I know that's lame. <laughs> Like I know, I, I realize as an American that that's lame for me to say that, but I just do. <laughs> Look, that's okay. I'm I'm somewhat of a hybrid, uh, having uh, having spent a lot of time in the UK and then Australia and Latin America, putting aside obviously international travel for business. So forgive me for being a hybrid. Oh no, no! This is this is perfectly this is perfectly good. I'm excited to have you on a show. Shout out to uh, our mutual friend Josh for connecting us. I appreciate it very much. Um, so I'd love for you to start off by giving the audience a little bit about your background. You do a, a whole whole lot of uh, different things. As I said in the opening, you are a global business entrepreneur, uh, a speaker, advisor. You're also an author. I'm going to quickly post a link to uh, your website in the Facey chat. And for those of you who are listening uh, out there in SHR Media Land, or if you're listening to this as a podcast uh, download later on, it is John Rayner TV, excuse me, John Rayner dot TV. And Rayner is spelled R A Y N E R, John J O H N R A Y N E R dot TV. Um, and I'm going to place the link in the Facey chat. But give us uh, a little bit about your background, if you would. Well, Melanie, just a, a snapshot. I'll start with the end in mind. Um, right now, right now, my team and I, um, we, we help clients to boost their business uh, three to seven times within 18 months. And Melanie, that's when we're working with um, companies that are, probably more recently established, they're more than likely small, small to medium business, somewhere uh, between the $1 million and $10 million revenue generation space, and obviously playing in that sand pit by bringing in the right strategy, by bringing in the, the best type of digital marketing and automated sales and client service systems. It's very, very, very easy these days to, uh, to boost the business um, two, three, four, even more times within that time period I mentioned, 18 months. And to answer your question, all of that's based on uh, a long career. Um, started in engineering, but then uh, found that wasn't my forte. So um, it was 20 years ago I got involved in uh, more corporate marketing and sales, and then 18 years ago became a, a, a public speaker for business and trainer. I, I, be, I, I started my entrepreneurial path 18 years ago and without going uh, through the details of 18 years, where, where that's led me to now is having started uh, four companies which currently operate internationally. Two of them are professional services. Uh, one of them targets and serves uh, Fortune 500 companies 
is a multinational company. The second professional services business, like I just mentioned, John Rayner.tv, we're now working with uh, smaller size companies generating $1 to $10 million so that we can really boost uh, their efforts and their results. Uh, experience in uh, retail. I uh, have a great retail business in Latin America. And then online, have a great e-commerce business where we're making profits every day or money whilst we sleep because we're selling uh, products out of Asia to 26 different uh, countries that can speak English, whether it be first, second, or third language. But putting that aside, uh, I think I've been blessed and fortunate over the last uh, two decades almost to have worked with some of the best um, companies, international companies, their leaders, their strategic thinkers. So what we do now, Melanie, is, is a, a, we're able, we be my team, to, to tr- uh, transfer all that's been learned collectively for two decades with, like I said, some of the best leaders. It's de- definitely, definitely not my intelligence. I, uh, I say I'm a great plagiarist. Uh, yeah. I take what works and uh, just apply it to clients these days, and, and we see some sig- significant results. I hope that uh, answers your question. No, it does. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. And that make that makes a lot of sense. I, I am wondering, I have a friend who's an engineer, and I'm wondering how you get from engineering. It takes a lot of education to, to <laughs> and, and dedication to become an engineer. And then you decide, meh, not for me. <laughs> I don't Ma- think Melody, that it's, a funny, it's a funny story. I'll tell it quickly. I was born in 73, giving my age away. And... Uh, Back in the 70s and 80s, obviously, all learning, especially in London, uh, England, uh, basically was about 99.9% audio dominated. You'd listen to the lecturer, I called them, or the teacher at the front of the room and expected to embrace what they were saying. Well, I didn't remember anything. I'm, I'm highly, highly visual. Ah. And I'm highly, highly kinesthetic means if I'm not personally involved, if I'm not practically involved right. in the learning process, I would leave the room. So I, I would literally go to the bathroom four times per an hour class. It got to the point where, believe it or not, Melanie, I got expelled um, at the age of 15 and a half for causing too many problems. So basically, the school allowed me back in. Uh, six months later to take exams, which I failed miserably. My parents panicked. My dad was an engineer, so he got me into a situation where I uh, was able to uh, start an apprenticeship uh, where you have to study for four years. You have to obviously give your time, your life to that company for the next four years. So look, uh, it was a, it was a good discipline to learn, don't get me wrong, but after seven years of engineering, that meaning four years of study and three years of uh, application, my, my um, what is the name, supervisor, my supervisor sat me down in a performance review and said, John, you're not the worst. This guy was about 63 years of age at the time. He said, John, you're not the worst engineer I've ever had the displeasure of working with in the last 40 years, but you're in the top three categories. And I realized that wasn't, I'm serious. I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still uh, attending counseling as we speak. Um, and, 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 so, and so I realized that wasn't my path or my uh, trajectory towards success. And uh, having moved to Australia, in 96, I decided to cut my ties with engineering. And, and Melanie, I got involved in marketing and sales, which I had never done before. And interestingly enough, within six months, I'd become the top salesperson or performer uh, across the nation or the Asia Pacific region. So I thought, ah, maybe there's something to this. And, and of course, the story uh, continues from there. Excellent. That's great. And, you know, and I, I, uh, I, I'm a recovering uh, school teacher, secondary school and, and professor. And, uh, you know, tell the kids, listen, your first career, I know it's, seen, it's not that it's not a major decision. Of course it is. But it's a decision that you may not stick with. So don't 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 like put too much pressure on yourself to, 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 to pick this career because it's likely to change. And, you know, Absolutely. you know, because we change, we change as people and, uh, you know, we change as, as, you know, as to what's important to us and what we think sounds like a great idea in, in application, not, not so much. <laughs> Look, I, I agree, but I also think, I also think, Melanie, we're living in such wonderful times, you know, obviously long gone are the days where 
maybe like my father and grandfather, one stayed in the same trade, possibly the same country, city, even uh, local area, you know, doing the brick and mortar business or whatever their profession was at the time. You know, we're in a time now where where the, the, the world has become so small, uh, obviously through digital marketing and otherwise. I mean, uh, I feel like I'm behind the curve, don't get me wrong. Uh, my companies do very well and they're very profitable. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just shy of 46 years of age and I, I love it. I love it when I, you know, have um, uh, people that I know who are 20 to 30 years of age literally making millions of dollars a year, um, sitting almost in their underwear in their grandmother's or their, their mother's, uh, you know, basement um, because they're able to reach the world now and they can quickly assess whether what they're doing is right for them. And obviously, if one does know what their passion is, even at a, a young age, instead of being, instead of being hindered by the uh, 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 obstacles of the past, there are no obstacles today. And, and Melanie, I, I, I say this now in conferences. I've been public speaking and conference speaking for, like I said, 18 years, best part of 20 years. And I say to people now wholeheartedly, I say to people sincerely, I say two things. There's never been a better time. There has never, ever been a better time to start or grow a business uh, as the time that we're living in now. And Melanie, I also think I also think there should be legislation to make it criminal to fail in business because it is very, very, very. E- or let me let me put it another way: it's much easier today than any time in my last eighteen years of entrepreneurship to do business. And I believe you. We have access to so much information, and there's businesses. I mean, there are literally businesses that will help you build businesses like yours that will help you, you know, that will help you. So let's talk a little bit about that business and how it is that you do this. I I was intrigued uh, when I was doing a little research for for the show, and I was at your on your website, and it says build your business seven times, uh, three to seven times within 18 months. Now that sounds, that sounds too good to be true. That sounds like an infomercial. That just sounds crazy. <laughs> okay. That just, that just sounds nuts. So look, I, I understand, but uh, it's very, very simple, especially when now John TV is focusing uh, towards, and we're only serving, like I said, small organizations, which are already established they're generating at least a uh, million dollars of sales, uh, somewhere between a million and 10 million, which means they've proven their concept, they've proven they have a product or service that works, but you know and I know, Melanie, most of these small business operators, you know, they're, 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 they're not sleeping, um, there's too many things to try and manage, uh, they have a lot of information, a lot of information, uh, but less comprehension, meaning how the moving parts fit together, yes. and then even less, even less application, uh, I, do, I, do, um, I do a daily social media video five times a week, Monday through Friday, that's on my johnrainer.tv uh, website, or, or Facebook, or Instagram, or LinkedIn, or, or YouTube, and recently I did a, uh, a post, it was just a short video, five minutes about the three stages of learning, and this is from the sages of thousands of years ago. They said there's only three. Uh, there's only three steps of um, learning. Number one is uh, is information, and we all have a lot of that because we're living in the age of access to information. Number two is comprehension, where you actually understand how all that information fits together, and number three is the application, and that that person is called wise and Mentally, to answer your question, what was concerning me more and more, uh, like I said, we've worked in the Fortune 500 and large, large business space for nearly 20 years. They've got massive budgets. They've got massive resources. And in fact, sometimes it's hard to squeeze into those spaces because they've already got a training manager. They've already got a motivator. They've already got a marketing specialist. They've already got teams of people. But what I noticed was that many, many uh, entrepreneurial friends or many, many um, business associates who are running, you know, reasonable companies, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars uh, in revenue, I, I was watching these people working themselves to the bone uh, all hours of the day and night. And I noticed something uh, which I think is a trend for most 
uh, uh, entrepreneurs, or small business owners, and that is that they have a lot of information they'll need. They've been watching every single mentor on uh, Facebook and social media and YouTube. They've been to multiple conferences. Uh, I was speaking with uh, someone who's a new client recently out of North America. Uh, this person boasts, I don't think it's a good boast, they boast of having been to every you know, major conference. If I said the names, you would know them of the speakers. They've been to every major conference. They've spent nearly $100,000 in the last two and a half years on education, information, and over dinner, you can actually have a very mature conversation about comprehension. They, they kind of get how the parts fit together, but here's the key. In the last two and a half years, guess how much of that information and comprehension they've applied? <laughs> Almost zero. And here's the thing, Melanie, this person's running a $5.5 million business. That might sound interesting to some, but here's the challenging part. Over the last two and a half years, their revenue hasn't increased, but their costs have. So all that's really happened is they're doing more work, yet they're earning less profit. That doesn't sound smart to me. It's, so, it's not. It's not smart at all. And, and yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of myself, especially what, you know, one of the great things about doing this show is that I have people like you and people like my guest the last hour. I have access to all this fantastic information. And I and and while I'm talking to my guests, I'm going, oh yeah, I'm doing that. Oh yeah, I'm, do, I'm definitely doing that. Oh yeah, I'm writing that down. I'm doing. I'm going to go back and listen to the show, and I'm doing that for my business. Ask me how much of the stuff that I've learned I've done. <laughs> so, I can relate. I, I I won't ask live, but I I could guess the answer. <laughs> yeah. If you're like me and everyone else, but here's the key, Melanie. Here's the key. Um, you know, I could I, I could sit back and watch what's not happening for entrepreneurs and small business owners, or or I could pull a um, a team of people together, uh, which we have based in um, the US. I could pull a team of people together, and these are my team that not only build my companies and make them successful and profitable, but now what we do is we don't uh, consult, as you know, is just giving information and strategy to people. We don't just conference speak, which is, you know, sometimes a lot of motivation and some strategy, but let's be really honest, most people walk out of the room pumped for a few hours and then that dies off quickly and your next cup of coffee. Um, but ultimately, uh, we now work with serious clients uh, who are prepared to pay uh, well because we're bringing in a team to do everything from, and I won't, I won't mention Everything that we do, uh, there's not enough time now. However, to just you know touch on the key points, we we look at the branding, we look at the attraction of, we look at the digital marketing and their social media assets, we look at their product and service or how that's being sold well or not well. We look at the engagement, we look at the targeting, um, and then of course we put into place and we build, we build. All of this for our clients, whether it, mean, whether it means to rebrand or to improve upon what they've got, or some companies, it's amazing to me how some of these companies earning two, three, four, five million really have shocking, shocking um, architecture in terms of their digital marketing and their sales processes and automated sales and client service uh, structures. And so back to your earlier thought about uh, infomercial with my slogan, boost your business three to seven times within 18 months. Um, not only have I done that with our own companies, uh, four companies over the last years, but more importantly, we do that now with our clients and our clients are shocked that it takes us usually uh, with a month of strategy and then two months of uh, structure or restructure, that's three months. Then we go into what's called omnipresent marketing mode for about another three months. Every case is different. Every project is different, but this is typically the case. So within about six months, um, Melanie, uh, the clients not only see their business looking, feeling, engaging better, targeting better, retargeting better, but they actually start to see the money coming through the door quickly. This is not an investment where, you know, one looks towards two and three years to get their money back. They start to see improved revenue and sales. 
uh, after that three month mark of strategy and restructure or structure. And it's fascinating uh, to watch clients' faces when they literally see their, 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 their revenues and their profits going up. And of course, you know, uh, when, we, when we do get involved with a client, it's not just around the digital marketing and the sales and the client service. You know, there's enough collect- collective experience that we look at ways to uh, minimize costs and boost profits and cash flow. That's incredible. And, and I find nowadays, and in, in, in talking to some of my, I had a guest on uh, in the last week or so uh, who does the, cr- the the credit side of business. Actually, he's a new Money Talk with Melanie uh, sponsor, Mr. Mr. Um, <laughs> Mr. Credit. Uh, oh, I'm going get, to get my sponsor's name right. Uh, Mr. Credit Repair, Repair.biz. Um, but we one of the things we talked about is how a lot of people a lot and a lot of businesses really want the kind of service where somebody else can do the tedious work for them for their business or even for their personal you know like life and this is what you're talking about because for in order for a business owner to do what it is that you're doing is very tedious and time consuming and it can't necessarily focus on what their craft is on what their actual businesses because the the business side of your business is completely different than at least in my opinion is completely different than whatever service it is that you're providing if i if i'm making sense oh absolutely and and look um it's really interesting to me because uh there's two there's two types of small business uh entrepreneur that we're we're helping or or company that we're helping now one is the person who wants to be a thought leader. You know, they've got decades of experience and they realize that they need to be a voice in their market, whether it be locally or globally. Um, And it's funny, Melanie, because, you know, I'll sit down, I'll sit down with these people and talk, or maybe we talk over Zoom or some type of, you know, video chat, and they're telling me that I'm not consulting to them. They're telling me, this is what they need. This is what I need to do. I have the education. I have the information. I, I have the comprehension. I just don't have the time or the wherewithal. I don't have the resources in terms of people to do it. And it's amazing to me how many of these people say, John, I, I did try in the last two years and I, I, I worked with some people or I got some people who said that they were specialists on board, but ultimately uh, they lost time and money because the people who claim they're specialists um, um, so the second group is obviously where you've got an entrepreneur or business leader who's got a, a physical company, an actual company that they need to grow. So there's the thought leaders who want a personal brand and personal presence online that we help, and then you've got the company. But uh, look, I myself, um, over the last years, Melanie, uh, I have wasted tens of thousands of dollars by engaging people who said that they were specialists. And by the way, I wasn't even using the cheaper ones, you know, where you get what you pay for. Um, right. I actually, had, I actually had a legal situation um, in Latin America with one of my companies last year because we actually got in the top, so they, 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 they present themselves as the top digital marketing um, business across the nation I was working in. And we ended up in a legal suit because what should have taken two months to build for it took them three and a half months, and the system crashed three times. We had egg on our face. Oh. So, so when, when, I, when I bring my team to a client, albeit a, 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 an entrepreneur or thought leader or a company that wants to boost and grow three to seven times in 18 months, uh, it's a relief for them when they don't have to even consider uh, uh, looking for the right provider, gaining multiple proposals, and then basically crossing their fingers, hoping that their dollar is going to be well spent. Exactly. Exactly. That is uh, that is extremely true. And even that is time-consuming. Even e- even that part is time-consuming. On, on the, and I, I was beginning to realize that and provide certain, you, you know, those services for... Um, for my sponsors who, you know, I, I of course sell, uh, you know, ad buys and things like that for this show. And um, I started to provide, you know, the services of putting together ads for them and stuff because they didn't they didn't have them. And they didn't know how to how to get them. And it, that was something I already knew how to do. You fill in gaps, you know, that's how capitalism works. You know, you find gaps in the in the market and you fill them. 
So, but you, it, people don't have time for that, especially if it's not their area of expertise. So, you know, that, that, that is what you do. And nobody has time to hunt around and find someone who's good and you're really taking a chance. And then there, there are those people that you have to be aware of, like you were just saying, who will, you know, sometimes people, businesses will create price points, high price points to give the impression that that's, that that is what the demand structure is. And it sounds like that Absolutely. that company did did to you. Like, you know, they, they priced their services really high to give um, people who are looking for services the impression that you, we're just that good. <laughs> so that's... Absolutely. And look, you know, I'm thinking of right now we've got some clients on board who uh, uh, a couple who are uh, just wanting personal branding and uh, wanting to be their, their, their name to be known. Uh, as a business, and then of course there's other companies that we serve who are actual companies and, and, and company brands. Um, but especially for those who want to just build the personal brand, again, um, I, they can tell me what to do. They 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 have the information, they have the comprehension. Um, however, however, the biggest relief for them, uh, and especially a couple of the clients, they I've known them for more than a decade. I the funny thing is. Uh, I worked with them in my corporate, in my other professional services company that serves corporations. And these executives or directors are now saying to me, "Hey, John, you know, you've worked with my company for years. Now, can you help me as an individual become a thought leader or build a personal online brand?" And the biggest relief for them, Melanie, is the fact that um, because my team and I get it, you know, we've got a Chad Dyke. Uh, Chad is uh, an incredible um, uh, strategist in his own right. You know, he's um, he's got an MBA in his own right. He's got a degree in computer science. He's ex IBM technical uh, consultant. So this guy's phenomenal. He's he's our project manager for the team. This guy's phenomenal in not only understanding the strategy, understanding the elements of business. Uh, and what works and doesn't, you know, he understands the marketing, and then he gets the technical. So when he's overlooking the team of people who are, who are actually building the technical and, and applying the technical on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know, nothing gets past him. And I've realized unless you've got that type of quality, uh, either in your team, and, you know, they're on salary, or whether, you know, engaging a, a business like John Rayner.tv to do it for your company, then, you know, you're not only going to lose a lot of physical um, or potentially lose a lot of physical funds. Uh, I can't tell you how much more money I lost over the last years in choosing the wrong people in terms of opportunity costs because of the time that was um, wasted. Uh, and that right there is the nail on the head where you just said about opportunity costs. And a lot of people don't think about that. And that that is big in business. And considering that, you know, regularly. What is the opportunity cost? I read a book one time called, um, oh goodness, uh, I think it's called Organization for Dummies. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ironically, I lost that book, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> I, I just tell that story all the time because I think it's just hilarious that I can't find my, my Organization for Dummies book. But uh, <laughs> I need to order it again. But one of the things that it talked about was opportunity costs and like whether or not you should um, hire people, like making the decision uh, of whether or not to hire someone to do something for you or doing it yourself and the opportunity cost involved and how you determine that. That's how I determined that, that I needed to get a cleaning person. <laughs> so, what, Absolutely. You know, what do you get paid? And the basic formula was, well, what do you get paid an hour? How long does it take you to clean the house? Does it take more than that? Does it cost more than that to clean the house? If it does, exactly. hire someone and do something else. Well, Melanie, look, so, uh, you know, some of your audience, I'm sure, of uh, uh, business owners or at least business leaders, they'll understand the nature of opportunity costs. Uh, you know, I personally, like I said, you know, with four companies under my belt currently, uh, let's just say that the time literally is uh, of the essence, as it is for all of us, we're all very time precious. But, uh, you know, at this stage of my uh, career and development, uh, I, I, I don't really have uh, a minute to waste, or should I, I should say I don't want to. And I know that many people talk about this. I know that it's very, very um, standard, but it's quite scary. It's quite scary how much time and money people waste. I even gave you the example 
of the company in North America that's you know sitting on five to six million dollars a year in revenue, which uh, all sounds very good at a dinner party or over a barbecue until you realize that they're not improving in their sales, they're not improving in their systems and their resources, and obviously their costs are going up and their profits are, are going down. Exactly. We are right up against a break. And when we come back on the other side of the break, I want you to talk to us about, I want you to give, give away the store, so to speak. But I do want you to touch on uh, just some of the services that you provide that help build businesses specifically. And uh, then I want to uh, move on to some other things uh, that you do in your business. Does that sound good? Great. Absolutely. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. My guest this hour is John Rayner, and uh, he is talking to us about how to boost your business three to seven times within 18 months. He's a global entrepreneur, speaker, advisor, and author. Very, very insightful conversation. Enjoying it quite a bit. I hope you are too. We'll be back in a few minutes. Right now, you can get the credit you deserve. Just visit MrCreditRepair.biz. Let their expert credit repair specialists remove late payments, charge-offs, collections, even old bankruptcies fast and easy. That's MrCreditRepair.biz. Why go anyplace else? Increase your credit score today. At Mr. Credit, you always get a quality service all at our everyday discount price. Stop getting turned down for cars, credit cards, or even new homes. Visit MrCreditRepair.biz today. That's MR Credit Repair dot biz. Your credit repair is our number one priority. Who likes paying taxes? Nobody. That's why Eva Rosenberg from TaxMama.com wants you to pay less of them. Read Small Business Taxes Made Easy and learn how legally hiring your spouse and children can slash your taxes. Learn how to set up a business plan that minimizes taxes, the benefits of setting up an exit plan, how to avoid getting audited, and how to legally increase your deductible expenses with better record-keeping techniques. Don't let the IRS squeeze you out of every penny. Visit TaxMama.com. Click on Ask a Tax Question to get free answers to your tax and business questions. That's TaxMama.com Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, it's Sean from the Sackheads Radio Show. Also one of the owners here at the SHR Media Network. Are you opinionated? Have you ever wanted to do your own show? Have you ever heard somebody like the Sackheads and go, yeah, I could probably do that better? Well, now's your chance. Send me a five-minute clip at sackheadsradio at gmail.com and maybe you can be part of the SHR broadcast. Sackheadsradio at gmail.com Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were abused in the making of this ad. When dirty politicians, shadow governments, and deceptive Islam blind the world with fake stream media smoke, their only fear is one man with a cane. I'm Dave Miller. Join me through SHRmedia.com, HighPlainsTalkRadio.com, and the Western Free Radio Network. At Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes for a different perspective weekly on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. And catch me on Jeff Mitchell's EDL Radio on BlogTalkRadio.com. There's no feeling that Because truth is not always pleasant. Hey guys, it's Zach Edplin. I'm excited to tell you about a brand new show here on the SHR Media Network. I'm teaming up with the one and only, all-powerful, the bloviating Zeppelin sitting here to my left, bringing to you a, a fresh new show uh, here on the network. It's uh, Against Tyranny. And uh, we'll be picking up where the Sackheads left off. Excited to be with you, sir. Sackheads against, sack against Tyranny. We're going to chat. We're going to chat Wednesday night. Sackheads against Tyranny. Wednesday night, 11 p.m. Oh, it's the same time, right? 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Same sack time, same sack channel. SHRmedia.com. See what I did there? 
It's, it's your business demon here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media at High Place Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. Human by race, Christian by faith, American by nationality, and conservative by choice. Reverend Ralph J. Kenham Sr. is the right guy on SHR Media from 8.05 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. And if on the rare occasion I am ever wrong, I will still always be right. The right guy on SHR Media. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday, from 7 to 9 a.m., right here on SHR Media. Why are they joining us? For fun things like sports, politics, oh, maybe some news and entertainment, and all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m. here on SHRmedia.com. Welcome back to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. Our guest this hour is Mr. John Rayner. He is the owner and founder of JohnRayner.tv. He's a global entrepreneur and speaker, author, advisor, and he's telling us about how we can grow our business with uh, three to seven times within 18 months. That's what his company does. That's what their specialty is. He has several. If you go to his website, I posted it in the facey chat and for those of you who are listening as uh and an, uh, a podcast or you're listening on shr media uh you can get to his website at john rayner.tv that's j-o-h-n-r-a-y-n-e-r.tv and uh, check out his website and welcome back mr rayner uh i wanted to ask you what are some of the tips uh, without giving away the store because obviously if uh, you want to be a client and get the deets Got to be a client. But uh, what, are some, what are some of the tips, some of the things that you uh, advise your clients to do to help boost their business? Uh, well, obviously, the answer will be dependent on the industry, company, product, and service. But if I was to stay focused on the keys that we um, talk about, uh, number one, Melanie, is to be um, raw. Number two, relevant. Number three, real. Number four, exposure. And last but not least, definitely not least, engagement, engagement, engagement. Obviously, raw, relevant, real, exposure and engaging uh, have their own subheadings and we could go into depth in each of those areas, but they kind of speak for themselves. And here's the irony today that uh, the majority, you understand, you understand, Melanie, that the majority I'm talking about, well, statistics say, statistics say that uh, 95% of business or more globally is not, not using digital marketing and social media and surgically targeting and retargeting um, uh, their best type of avatar or audience in order to bring in the dollars. Uh, that is a stunning statistic. That, really, that's a stunning statistic. I can't believe that it's that high. Did people just learn, well, like, that the internet... Remember, the key here is effectively. Ah, okay. That and makes... You know and I know that there are multiple companies who can say, well, look, I've got digital assets, I've got a website. Well, let's just look at that. Typically... Uh, websites are a waste of time online for most companies. Uh, uh, many companies will say, well, I've got a Facebook page. Let me give an example uh, with a, uh, a new client of ours we took on. After many, many years and having paid a different digital marketing so-called specialist $175,000 um, over the last three years, they've got 3,500 Facebook followers and 
they testify, this is the company we're working with now, we, we secured the uh, contract, they testify that, uh, to their knowledge, they've got no work from their digital media assets. Do they have a Facebook page? Yes. Is it effective? No. Is it engaging? No. Does it monetize? No. Do they have, um, do other companies have Instagram? Possibly, yes. Uh, do other companies have, it's interesting, <laughs> I was looking at a prospect uh, prospect digital assets recently, and they boast uh, many, many people on their Instagram. So they 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 beat their chest, mentally. They beat their chest. So they've been using a provider to get them lots of followers. But here's the irony: because they're not surgically targeted, they've got hundreds of thousands of followers. But if you see the posts, they're absolutely irrelevant. If you ask me, <laughs> uh, then no, I'm serious, and they're not um, engaging. And therefore, here's the, here's the irony, uh, there's not a provable and tangible return on investment or ROI based on the digital assets. So, so my point is that apparently more than 95% of, um, uh, uh, 95% of um, uh, companies uh, statistically are supposedly uh, not effective even if they have digital assets. And all I can say is this with the, the type of clients that we attract, uh, they do beat their chest saying, look at what I have, and they don't like me. Um, for the f It's like a doctor, isn't it? When the doctor presses on your pain point, you don't like that moment uh, of the journey or the relationship, but you look forward to the medication. Um, so ultimately, it's one thing to have certain assets, but that doesn't mean uh, they're, they're, they're demonstrating or they're providing a return on investment. That doesn't make sense. That does make sense. I mean, yeah. That does make sense. I, I and, and listen, and I, I find it I, because I at least have some awareness. I just apply it to myself. I have an awareness that these are things that I should be looking at. I have an awareness, um, you know, that I should be looking at the analytics and 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 examining engagement and stuff like that. Now, do I know what to do about it? <laughs> right now it's um trial and error you know i'm looking at the analytics and i'm like okay well let me change let me change the way i targeted you know the way i targeted that last ad and and try something else because i did not get out of it what i what i wanted to get um i don't know if other entrepreneurs have this issue uh, <laughs> but one of the issues that I have on, on my show and with my marketing is that um, when I target ads for engagement, 70% of my audience are, are, are male. And, uh, <laughs> and I tend to get inquiries that are not business related. <laughs> <laughs> from my, from I, my, I guess, I guess they're not looking for interior design consultancy. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> gro gro grocery shopping consultancy. Yes, not financial services, which is what you know, or or you know, for an ad buy uh, on my show or something like that. So I, I. You know, and I'm like, how do I, I'm like, is it something that I'm saying? Because I, I don't, you know, I, I was not advertising for a date, and yet. <laughs> this is what well, Melanie, look, we've got, we've got, you know, one of our, um, one of our, uh, sorry, our retail company. Uh, we, we search it uh, because it's a brick and mortar business and uh, because it provides a food product, which you cannot send across the country or you cannot send across um, uh, waters internationally. You know, we, we, we've been over the last years very, very surgically targeted in the, um, in the uh, Instagram following. Uh, but here's the wonderful thing. Even though, even though we boast about, you know, 10, 11,000 followers, they're very, very close to our brick and mortar business. And we, that, that monetizes because many of those people actually visit our um, a juice bar, a 100% healthy juice bar, and they actually purchase our product and they gain the benefits of. Now, um, our e-commerce business, we target 26 different countries and uh, very, very clear on how we target. And of course, you know, we have thousands and 
and thousands and thousands of people who see our ad and engage with our ad and then obviously people buy online. That's wonderful, you know, making money whilst you sleep. Um, but my point is, like any of your listeners who have had a bad accountant, because um, if the accountant, for example, if the accountant isn't keeping up with the IRS's changes to policies and rules on a monthly basis, you know, you can lose a ton of money. I just had a friend lose about $135,000 because their accountant made one change of their, uh, of their national uh, taxation uh, department. Uh, lost $135,000. That might be a drop in the ocean for some, but to other people that might be a chunk of change. But just because that accountant didn't keep up with what is real today. Now, why is that important for your listeners who, who are even trying to comprehend how this entire digital marketing world works? Guess what? Facebook, like the IRS, they're changing their policies and their procedures and their laws and their regulations on a monthly basis too. Yeah. So... What my team does is as much as applying the rules and the regulations, they're also looking at those daily and making sure they've got a, a, a good grip on them, as does a good accountant, which is why you get what you pay for. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And, and, and just to expand on that for the benefit of the audience, um, and, and this question has popped up a few times, and there's even there are some memes that, that talk about um, things, for example, things like liking your own posts. They're on Facebook, there are memes that make fun of people liking their own posts. And I'm not even sure if this applies anymore, but at one point, Facebook algorithms were set up so that when you like your own posts, um, it gives you more exposure. To, you know, the, the, the post will be seen more when you like your own posts rather than you not liking your own posts. But there are people who are unaware of, of that nuance of Facebook algorithms and make fun of people who like their own posts as if it doesn't make any sense. So that's just kind of like a simplified, you know, example of, of that uh, and why a company, company, right. Why a company like yours is important because, you know, you keep track and Facebook changes their algorithms all the time and you need, need to be aware of that. And who, what business person who's busy out there, you know, always honing in on their craft. You know, I'm always, I'm trying to keep track of, you know, financial service compliance issues and, you know, my media part. And, and, and that's the craft that I work on and trying to make sure I pronounce all my words correctly and enunciate and th- <laughs> things like that. Do I have time to keep track of, you know, Facebook and Instagram al- algorithms on a regular basis? Of course not. And, and look, this is why, excuse me, this is why recently um, uh, I'm, I'm doing a series of videos on uh, leveraging, leveraging or how your business can leverage social media. If people visit TV and click in the menu on the videos option, videos option, then uh, they'll get to see those videos on there. Look, we have some clients, uh, Melanie, because of the surgical targeting or the type of demographic they're, they're targeting, uh, who we don't even uh, recommend Facebook. I mean, Facebook, to even start talking about Facebook, which is a universe of its own, literally a universe of its own, will be here Will be here till next week without much sleep. And that's only one social media platform. Um, so if people are interested in, you know, more of the, the best uh, targeted demographics for each an individual platform, go to johnrainer.tv and click on videos. And there's some, uh, there's some great information there. But uh, coming back to coming back to um, uh, understanding understanding uh, the essence or, or how the social media platforms work, that's that's not what a business owner is supposed to be focused on, right? That's not what that's not their best opportunity cost. Um, exactly. Therefore, therefore, our team take over. And look, uh, I only started. I only started John TV. Um, uh, two months ago, as I said to you, a different professional service company I have. We've been serving Fortune 500 and international companies for 18 years. A uh, wonderful, wonderful client base. Some of the best uh, leaders across Asia Pacific and North America and England and uh, some companies in South America. Uh, that's one thing, but John TV only started two months ago. Um, but uh, I am very, very cautious in advertising spend and aside from you know our daily facebook and daily instagram and linkedin and youtube aside from that we uh we are 
currently, we are currently targeting state by state and putting out very, uh, remember I said to you, raw, relevant, real um, exposure and engaging adverts. Yes. And, and it's wonderful because one thing that uh, uh, social media platforms, especially Facebook, does allow you to do is be more targeted than ever at a very, very low cost compared to old-fashioned uh, marketing uh, tools yes. or, or mediums. And so what we do, for example, we're running a, uh, a workshop uh, seminar, a one-day seminar in, um, in Phoenix, Arizona in the first week of um, December. So right now, Melanie, uh, with my team, uh, they're doing all the designs, they're doing all the promotions, they're running all the algorithms, they're doing everything they can. So what people don't see behind the scenes is that even if your standard uh, Facebook page, business page, or your Instagram doesn't have millions and millions of followers, that is not important. What is important is what monetizes. So my team right now on a daily basis, we're putting out videos, but we're paying. We're paying Facebook and we're paying other platforms to target entrepreneurs and business leaders of small business in the Arizona state only. And then after about 30 days of what I call plowing the ground, we will sow the seed mid-November. We will sow the seed by then targeting those who have been looking at our adverts, clicking on the adverts, watching the videos, visiting our website. We can see exactly who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what time you're doing it. Not we personally, but obviously Facebook allows us to do that. Right. And then guess what we do? We're, we're right now, we're right now seeing wonderful, wonderful results with thousands of people seeing our uh, videos each day. This is aside from our following. So remember... I, I have uh, business associates who boast millions of people in their following, but they're not monetizing. But it's far, far wiser to have a less following, but monetizing. It's actually even wiser to have a bigger following and more monetization. But my point is, um, the people in Arizona, when they start to see uh, the uh, targeted ads in mid-November, then, of course, uh, we just focus on working with those, and then we invite them to the event. They come to the event, and there's other things that happen. Uh, when when have we lived in a time, uh, business speaking, when have we lived in a time where I could be traveling around the world and still running other companies, doing other things, clients, providers, et cetera, et cetera, and yet, and yet uh, be able to have success in the state of Arizona? And once that uh, is completed, we, we do the same thing, and we overlap in then the state of Florida and then the state of Washington, and the list goes on. That, that's incredible and so very smart. I, I, I want to make sure that we mention a couple of things before we close the show. I'm looking at the time and I'm like, oh, no. Uh, you have a new book entitled Confident, Powerful, and Persuasive Public Speaking. And that can be downloaded for free within johnrainer.com. So I want to make uh, sure. JohnRainer.tv. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't, my first time reading today. Uh, JohnRainer.tv right. <laughs> John on JohnRainer.tv. Um, and you can also uh, book John for any business conference and event by, by visiting the same site, JohnRainer.tv. Uh, finally, you can book a free 21-minute advice session by visiting the same site, johnrainer.tv. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned all of that. I've posted uh, the link twice um, in the Facey chat. And for those of you who are, that's a tremendous offer too, John. I appreciate that. Uh, and for those of you who are in SHR Media Land or just or have downloaded this as a podcast, it's johnrainer.tv, J O H N R A Y N E R. TV. You definitely want to check out uh, his website so you can check out all of those offers. It's a, it's a beautiful website, moves very quickly. Uh, it's very clear. I love a good website. I just love a good website. I do. I love, you know, you go on some websites and you're like, what? And like, what is this? And then you, <laughs> but, the, but your website is, is just really beautiful, beautifully done. Uh, Celeste in the Facey chat uh, says, thank you so very much. Uh, and uh, she, she's on your website right now uh, and loves the information that, that you uh, have provided there. Um, 
So she said she loves the aesthetics of your website. She's she's a regular listener and one of my besties. So <laughs> so she loves she loves your site. Is there anything else you'd like that's to tell wonderful. the audience? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's wonderful, Melanie. You're you're a great host. Obviously, you're uh, gifted at what you do, and thanks for all the all the good that you do. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on on the show. Fantastic information. I, I think I probably will be uh, scheduling an appointment with you soon. So, <laughs> You're okay. thank you, Melanie. Thank you very much. You have a great weekend. Likewise. All righty. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. I hope that you all have enjoyed these last couple of hours. My last guest was John Rayner of TV, global entrepreneur and professional bo- business booster. Uh, just lots of fantastic information. You should check out his website and all of the offers uh, that he included on his site. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and post... All of those offers uh, before I get out of the facey chat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the guest in the first hour, Miss Tamisha Smith, who is the uh, chief executive offer of the Dunbar Center, and talked talk to us about successful entrepreneurship and giving back in your community. If you missed that, you definitely want to go back and uh, download the podcast and listen to that first hour. She did a fantastic job. And, uh, If you are, you know, new, starting out entrepreneur, you don't want to miss what she had to say uh, about being a successful um, entrepreneur and and the big ways in which she's giving back to the community and how she did it. Like I said, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I want to thank everyone for listening on SHR Media, all of the engagement in the Facey chat. I want to thank both of my guests and anybody who is listening uh, on any of the podcast platforms such as iTunes or Blog Talk Radio or any of them. And uh, remember, all of this is very important because after all, it's your money. Have a great weekend.